Hello. So the recording in progress just went and uh, through me. Hello, my name is Paul Edwards. Welcome to this webinar um, on how to choose your drama school from the stage. Um, I'm really excited to be chairing this discussion with some fantastic panelists. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm an actor trainer and theatre lecturer working across drama schools, conservatoires and universities. And I'm also a PhD researcher at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, where I'm examining actor training in the UK. So I'm really excited to be speaking with our panelists and just to be really trying to share this conversation as we go through. You'll notice at the bottom of your screen there should be a Q&A function. If you have any questions that you'd like to put out at any point during this panel discussion, please feel free to enter them via that function. You can also ask questions directly through the chat um, and we'll sort of try and make a combination. There'll be about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of our discussion to share back any questions as we go and try and answer them as clearly as we can. Um, bef before we dive into the conversation in general, I'd like very much to ask our panellists to introduce themselves. Um, we're joined today by Sam Marsden, Ali Spiro, Justin Pierre and Stuart Wood. Uh, Sam, if I could ask you just to uh, introduce yourself first of all. Hello, hi, I'm Sam and um, I was a drama teacher at youth theatres and in schools um, and stagecoach for about 12 years and now I'm a full-time writer. Um, I wrote the book 100 Acting Exercises for 8 to 18 year olds published by Bloomsbury slash Methuen Drama and um, I also write for the stage about how to choose your drama school and about the audition process and I write young adult fiction as well. Thanks very much Sam. Thank Ali. You. I was just muted there, that was tricky. Uh, so I'm Ali Spiro. Um, I have been working in drama education for quite a long time. I'm an actor. I was an actor for quite a long time too, uh, working across theatre, film, TV, ended up for seven years in Emmerdale, and then realised as much as I really, really loved Yorkshire, I probably needed to be in London with my family and got involved in drama school education, working at most of the drama schools in London. I ended up as head of the course at Alra. I am now head of the BA and Cert HE at Fourth Monkey, uh, which is very lovely. Thank you very much, Ali. Justin. Hi all, my name is Justin Pierre. I trained as an actor. I've been an actor for 25 years, I'm still acting, but through my acting, I decided to train as a, a teacher and I've been teaching for 15 plus years. Um, I'm now the head of acting at Arts Ed. Thank you very much, Justin. Stuart. Hi. Um, well, I've spent 35 years uh, working in conservatoire drum schools as an acting teacher uh, and a director. And in that time, I've sat on many, many, too many to mention or audition panels. Um, and last year, uh, myself and uh, Nancy Medina set up the Bristol School of Acting, which is now the UK's newest drama school to reimagine what actor training could be like. Plough that 35 years into something useful. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here with you to discuss this and to also offer some advice on how to choose your drama school to our um, our viewers. Um, I'd also like to just quickly explain how we're going to go through the process. What um, I'd like to do is kind of guide us through the process that applicants experience when they're going through the process of selecting drama schools, applying to drama schools and auditioning to drama schools, both in terms of what you can expect from that process in terms of how to work with drama schools, how to engage with their websites and with the people who are auditioning you, and also maybe what a little bit of what's expected from the other side, what's expected to from, from you as you go through that process. And um, to do that, we're just going to try and track it in the same kind of chronological order that we go through. So in a moment, my first question to the panelists is going to be asking them what advice they can give applicants or um, applicants, uh, significant others, family members, supporters, um, about how to select which drama schools to apply for. What should applicants be looking for when they're going through that process? Um, so without much further ado, I'd like to open that up. What advice? Um, can we give to applicants as they begin this process? Maybe for the first time, maybe the second time round? I don't know if anybody would like, yeah, Ali. So I'd say the most important thing is to research all the drama schools. There's many of them. 
There's lots and lots and lots. Um, you need to be going onto their websites, if possible, going to visit, getting in touch with students that are there, trying to find grads that are trained at those schools, ask them what their experience is. You know, if you come to me, I'm obviously gonna tell you the course I'm running is amazing. Um, I would be silly not to, but who you really need to talk to are the students that have gone through the training um, at whatever course you're looking at, because they'll tell you the real story. Um, and I think it's really, really important. And you know, many drama schools are offering very similar training, but we all have a slightly different ethos, atmosphere in the school, you know, for example, some schools are brand spanking new and really lovely and massive. That might be great. You might really like that, but you also might like to be in a tiny little school with, you know, cracks in the windows or where everybody huddles together and sits around a campfire to keep warm. It's what makes you feel good is what you need to be looking for, in my opinion. Justin, did you want, want to add something? Yeah, I mean, I agree absolutely with what, what Ali's saying. I also, it's, it's really about the research, uh, but when we say research is so broad, I mean, it's really for me about the curriculum. You need to be really specific and look at the curriculum of each drama school, because yes, we all offer, you know, contemporary drama training, but the curriculum is very specific. And you have to really think about what you want to achieve in terms of your learning and what type of actor you want to become, and then align that with the drama school specifically for your needs. I would say, so I would say curriculum is a, is a big exploration area. And that's looking over the first year, second and third year's curriculum in a lot of detail. You'll get a lot of information from that. Yeah, that's really helpful. because I was just about to ask as well about the clarification on um, how we might begin to do that. And it, just that sense of just going through the years that are available on the website and then reviewing that information, maybe checking it back across stuff. That's a really, a really helpful tip. Thank you, Justin. Um, Stuart, did you want to add anything? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, obviously I, I agree with all that. And I mean, researching teaching staff and, and their, their profile and, and, and going back to what Ali said, you know, you can learn a lot about the ethos of the school. Schools are being much more open now about what they think <laughs> and the way they, you know, take care of students. Uh, and that's a very big issue at the moment. And I think um, more schools are being forced to look at how they take care of, of the broadest range of students and how they, how they might encourage students from um, walks of life that haven't always been exposed to drama schools. So some of those things will tell you about the way the school might, might treat you and, and to take care of you while you're training. Yeah, thank you for raising that. I think that's a really important thing that we will come to that conversation, I think, as we progress through. And I think it's something that's really important to return to, because I'm, I'm also aware that as people tune in to watch something like this, it may be that you're questioning, actually, how you might fit into things or where establishments might lead. So any advice in that as we continue to go through, but we really appreciate it. Sam, did you want to add anything to the original question yeah I mean the original question the first thing that popped into my head was curriculums um the same as Justin look at the curriculums um some of the drama schools are better at sharing their curriculum than others <laughs> so that can make it hard I mean some of the websites it has a detailed curriculum which is fantastic for people to look at and I think if you can't get hold of that just write to the drama school and say you know if you've been offered a place can you give me the curriculum so that I can study that and you know when you're 18 years old 19 years old you may not even understand everything in the curriculum you might be like oh well what is Meisner or what is this and I'd recommend go away and research what this means and which training works for you and I found that um, quite a lot of the drama are quite different actually um, and the, with the drama schools can focus on different things. So some drama schools are really into film um, training and some are like very expansive and you'll be doing directing and you'll be doing writing and you'll be doing acting. Whereas others just will more hone in on one skill and will be honing going, no, we're really gonna focus on the acting here. Whereas another is like, we're gonna be focusing on creating collaborative theater. So ask yourself what it is you want from your training and where you want to end up and then find the right course that matches your wants and needs. 
Yeah, I think that's great. And I think I think identifying what the training will be, and that's something that we've heard now from all four of you in different ways. So I also want to maybe extend it. We can carry on as well talking in general about that advice, but also maybe start to consider the courses that applicants have to choose from um, and how they might go about determining that. Obviously, we have three institutions here that are represented that offer a variety of different courses and options, so we can hear directly from those as well. But I'm also really keen just in terms of your professional advice of actually what are the options that are available to a prospective drama school student. Um, Justin, did you have anything you wanted to develop either in relation to directly to that or following on from Sam? Just wanted to yeah, just go back quickly, just to say, I know it, is, it can't always be measured, but I mean, instinct has a lot to do with it when you go to an open day and you walk around and you see the staff and you see the, the building and speak to the students. So you really have to follow your instinct as well. Literally what feels right uh, for you, because, you know, you might have something put in front of you that is the best place to go. But when you get there, it just doesn't feel right. And we can't always explain that. But I think you need to to, to tap into your instinct and move with that. Yeah, that, yeah, a sense of intuition maybe as well. Um, so does anybody want to pick up that to talk about maybe what some of the what some of the what are some of the things on an open day or during the audition process that maybe a student might look for outside of the direct experience? Because obviously on those sort of days you might be really focused on that audition, or you might be really focused on the elements that make up the, the your process. Are there other things that they can keep an eye out? Um, just that just things that maybe you're aware in your institutions you try and, and promote and make sort of as clear as possible or Sam anything that you've seen in your range of experience maybe um yeah I mean intuition is everything and it can be so scary going in and auditioning for all the drama schools and you're so busy thinking oh you know are they gonna let me in and remember actually you are the customer <laughs> and you are also seeing whether the drama school is right for you so I just say just keep a really open heart and a really open mind um when you go in so that you can access your intuition and figure out if it is the place for you and you know if you're lucky enough to get some direction from one of someone on the panel um you know is that direction working for you and is that a way that you want to go forward and I've heard quite a lot of students before say that you know they had this drama school in mind it was their dream drama school all their life and then they go and do all the auditions and then they're like oh but I didn't click with that one that I thought was my dream one and they ended up clicking with one unexpected to them so try not to go in with too many preconceptions and just feel it And how does that maybe relate as well, again, to the, the question I, st I started to introduce around the different course options? Because again, these, if you may be going for one, Ali, I've just, I've just seen you've unmuted, so I'm gonna come directly to you. What, what do those different options offer as pr prospective student? I mean, there's many, many paths that you can take, particularly the bigger drama schools. A lot of schools now have expanded and have so many different courses that they're offering. Central, East 15, Rose Bruford, they have many, many courses. So you really need to be looking, again, reading, researching about all those courses and be, be clear in what you want. Um, don't feel that, you know, you're, I, I go and audition for the musical theatre course and they come back and say, oh, we'd love you on the device course. Hang on, don't be grateful for that. Say, um, I think it's your right, it's what you were saying actually earlier, that you're the customer, you're paying the money, you want what you, you know, you want what you want, and they're jolly lucky to have you, I think. And so just be really clear, look at all those courses, and there are many, 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 many different courses. And I think it's you, it might sound really interesting to you, but I would look at the outcomes of the students from those courses. If what you think is, I really want to be working in, I don't know, TV and theatre in London, then it's probably best not to be doing a European theatre course. Even if you haven't got another offer, what's it going to do? It's not going to help you. Go back and audition the next year. Do something else, make some work. But look at all of them and know what you want. You know, I've had a student talk to me just two minutes ago saying, oh, shall I apply for musical theatre and acting courses? And I said, no. No, what do you want? Know what you want. You're entitled to what you want. Justin. 
Yeah, just going on from Ali. I mean, knowing what you want is important, but if I'm if I'm honest, sometimes uh, speaking to students, I get the sense that there's not enough exploration in terms of them looking what courses are out there. There are a huge amount of courses out there. And sometimes people have it in their mind that they want to do actor training, but then realize maybe it's creative writing and or directing. Um, you really need to look at the courses specifically. Um, I trained at Rose Bruford myself um, many years ago, but even then they had, you know, uh, American iconic theater courses, European theater, devising. You know, there's a lot of courses available to you. So you really need to explore the courses in detail because you know you may click with one of those courses that are more suitable than just a straightforward BA acting. Yeah, I think I think there's there's something as well in both that idea of doing that research, that exploration, identifying what you want, and also what started to emerge this idea of, of imagining as you're a prospective student going that you are doing that research and you're doing it for yourself. And we've mentioned as a customer, but also just as an individual who's going to be welcomed into those institutions. Stuart, at this point, I wanted to turn, return to something you've begun to mention around really about the inclusive practices and the, the need for us to make sure that we're making drama school and actor training as accessible and as welcoming as possible to as wide a range of people that are representative of the world in which we live and which we want to see represented on stage and screen. And really just starting to think about how, how can we as institutions and as drama schools and as educators and, and artists support that and make sure that, that, that young people do feel like they're the priority when they're applying to our institutions, that it's, it's for them that they're going through that. I, I wonder if there's anything you'd like to bring in on yeah, that. Well, I, th I think, again, it's, it's part of, um, as everyone's been saying, it's, it's, it's part of your job when you're looking for a school to find out from that school what it's doing about that because some might be doing more than others. And, um, uh, and, it, and it's really important that they're committed to that in practice, not just in a policy document that's sitting on a Google Drive somewhere, that actually that they're, they're, they're really taking steps to do that. Uh, and, and to make that audition process um, as accessible as possible. You know, it used to be the case that uh, some auditions were very, very biased. I've sat on many panels where the audition is very biased against those who are coming with, with uh, an expected literary background. Uh, and um, and that's, uh, that, that's not the case anymore. That's being slightly deconstructed. And as we become, uh, as practitioners, more interested in identity and individual stories and less about actors as a blank canvas onto which we can paint, then um, that's that, that's something that, that schools are taking seriously. But I think it, when, when you're when you're looking for a school, you need to to really probe about what that school is doing to make itself more accessible. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, I, I just think you know we feel strongly about that uh, here at ours. There's many places, but you you really can't have an act of training that isn't reflective of society in every in every aspect. And, and like Stuart was saying, it's not just about paper, it's about taking it from paper to practice. And again, I go back to curriculum because when you look at the curriculum, um, for example, I know here at Arts, it's embedded in the curriculum when you're looking at equality, inclusion and diversity. Um, and, and that's important as well, okay? Um, is, there's no point you being somewhere and, and saying, okay, it's diverse, but do you feel included? You know, okay, there's equality, but there's not much diversity. You really have to look at all three of them from a 360 point of view and feel it when you're in the building and in the work you're developing. Thank you. Ali, yeah. Oh, I think you're on mute, Ali, sorry. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with that. And, um, it's a bit, and also what you need to be looking at, I think, is um, the practitioners that are working in those schools how diverse are they? Are there where, what is their ethnicity? What is their, are there people that has, have neurodivergent? Is there, is there people that come from the LBGTQI community? Are there people that are old? Are there people that are young? There are many protected characteristics. Um, all those protected characteristics need to be present in the practitioners that are working in this school so that 
you as a human being know that you're coming to a place where there will be somebody like you there. There will be somebody that understands your voice. It's important that I think that all schools and, and I think it's, that's happening, which is really great. I think there's also something Justin you said about researching the curriculum that's being taught so as well as the practitioners there's also the material that's being brought through or maybe looking at shows that are being produced for graduating students to make sure that there is not just representation in in, in the room but also in terms of putting um, an inclusive approach which doesn't necessarily mean having diversity as being divergent from a singular idea but actually something which is inclusive and puts everybody at the heart of it. I think um, I just just to slightly develop it a bit, I will also I'm really curious, particularly at the moment in the situation that we're in, in terms of um, the experience and exploration uh, post um, the COVID pandemic. And also, obviously, as we're coming out of it, maybe not entirely out of it. Um, I just wanted to ask about the resources and guidance that are available to applicants, maybe first time applicants who maybe maybe haven't done as much in the room as, as they, they maybe would have wanted to have done as they were going to apply. And also I'm interested about how the online audition experience has maybe impacted the, the approach that we have to that kind of inclusivity of bringing students from all backgrounds who maybe, maybe haven't been in an audition environment before and, and just wondering what opportunities there are. Sam. Yeah. Yes. Um, so first of all, something that I've heard so many students say to me is that they don't feel experienced enough or that they haven't had enough training or anything to even audition for drama school. And this makes me so sad. And I say to them, you don't need anything. OK, you don't need to have had some private acting class. You don't have to have gone to stagecoach. You can just turn up to a drama school audition with no previous experience. All you need is a love for acting. And if you love acting, and if you love looking at characters and plays, that's enough. So first of all, don't be put off, like if you feel like you haven't had the money to go to stagecoach or whatever, you don't need it. Um, drama schools are looking for authenticity. They're looking for passion. They're looking for raw talent. Um, so first of all, just walk through that door to the audition, whoever you are, and they're gonna welcome you. Um, and yeah, there are brilliant resources. Um, get into theater websites, really useful. There's lots of things that people can look at there. Um, open door, um, they're really fantastic. So you can look at that. And there are, um, actually YouTube can be quite a good resource, um, if be careful. Um, <laughs> so just, uh, there's quite a few people, you know, at the drama schools like RADA um, and Lambda, and they're in their first or second year. And they've done just short YouTube videos about the audition process, how they got in, um, and they're really useful resources um, for people. Uh, yeah, so, and there's so many um, drama schools now also offer audition waiver fee, like they will waiver the audition fee. Um, some of them will even reimburse you for your travel expenses. Um, so don't let audition fees put you off either. There are ways around that if you can't afford the fees. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I was just very quickly finding those links to actually put into the chat. So if people haven't encountered things like Open Door or Get Into Theatre as resources and opportunities, um, there's that element with it. In terms of thinking of, of some of the institutions, well, and, and other external things, are there, are there any other sources of, of support, guidance, or is there maybe any advice you'd give to a, a first time auditionee approaching your kind of process? Yes, Ali. There's definitely other support and guidance. I think most drama schools um, will be going to do outreach. We'll be visiting colleges, schools all over the place, offering free workshops, giving audition workshops. We definitely do that at Fort Monkey. I'm sure most, most of the schools do that. Um, so go and join in. If somebody's coming to your college and saying there's a, you know, a workshop from somebody from a drama school, go, go hang out. It's, it'll be fun. Um, yeah, just wanted to come in with that. And, and where might, um, so for example, with three institutions in the space and also Sam yourself as, as, a, as an independent um, educator and author, where would you recommend applicants or people interested in actually going to find those opportunities? So, because I, I think again, it's one of those things, isn't it? We sometimes can talk about it and just and assume, oh, you could go and find this from this theatre company. Are there any specific websites maybe that I can link to if somebody is literally sat there? This is their first port of call in thinking about starting this process. Is there anywhere where you'd say you absolutely should 
look here or look for this? I would say that if you're at a school and you want, you're interested in going to drama school, go to your drama teacher and say, hey, can you get some workshops into our school from, and ask your teachers to get people in. We'll come for free. <laughs> Thank you. And um, Justin. Yeah, when I speak to students about that, I highly, highly, highly recommend City Lit uh, because I think they do some fantastic short courses for people who are just starting out. And there's a lot of young people I've spoke to who want to go to drama school and don't know where to start. But the good thing about City Lit in terms of their courses is they go from beginners to intermediate to advanced. And there are courses there, like, you know, looking at audition speeches, preparing for drama school. And also, for example, contacting the institution of interest because they do short courses themselves. Arts, for example, does a summer school, okay, or short courses. And it's about looking at those short courses, whether it be in a break or, or in the evenings, and that's how you develop incrementally working towards applying to drama school. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Sam? Um, yeah, so places to go. Yeah, I mean, get into theatre is really good. The stage also do write a lot of um, really helpful advice articles with, um, and they interview lots of the different drama schools so you can hear like kind of get a taste a bit of what they're like I mean just googling drama schools UK <laughs> just <laughs> just check out the list and then just go through every single website and look at all of them um I mean there isn't really a central location anymore there used to be um where all the drama schools are listed I mean also you know on the UCAS you can look up the conservatoires um yeah I mean one thing I wanted to add sorry if I'm going off topic but we have got, you know, the full time courses, you know, where you're doing your three years full time. But there are also fantastic drama schools like the Identity School, which are offering evening courses. And it's like a full time training. So if you really can't afford to go to drama school, you can be working in the day and then you can be doing these evening kind of acting courses like we have in the US. We, um, they, we, like they have in the US. Um, they have a more studio type training, which is more evenings, weekends, part time. And so, yeah, I think look at all the options. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd slightly add to that as well. Um, the opportunities at theatres to be part of creative learning programmes. There's some amazing opportunities that run through that as well. And also uh, initiatives and courses like National Youth Theatre's Playing Up course, which is sort of free at the point of access and enables those same processes. Stuart, I'm really aware as well, as, a, as, a, as the newest um, drama school, actor training school, um, is there anything that you've found as you've begun to go through that process that you, you, you'd like to maybe bring to our attention? Well, I knew that actually we, we started uh, auditioning last year. So it's our, our first cohort started five weeks ago. Um, and um, you, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the sort of whole online process. And, and so we, we'd started with that. So that was our sort of uh, benchmark. But actually it's, um, you know, making a virtue out of a necessity. What it has done is, is it's made the whole process, particularly a first round auditioning, much more accessible uh, because you don't necessarily have to undertake a very expensive visit across the country um, for a for a short first round audition. Uh, so actually, um, that that process has been democratised quite a bit by online auditions and self tapes, and that's a that's a good thing. Um, that that opens it up to so many more people. Yeah. So that's continuing, and that's good. Yeah. Brilliant. Justin. Yeah, I wanted to say as well, that um, a key access point I reckon is the Federation of Drama Schools. Uh, when, you, when you contact, I mean, you can Google Federation of Drama Schools. They have a wealth of information clearly around drama schools that go through explicit detail in terms of applying uh, and what's required for you. And you'll get a lot of, of, of information there. Yeah, thank you very much. I've, got, I've put that link as well into the chat just now. So there's there's an access. So for anybody who's following us and you've heard all of these different information, I've just posted all the links of things that I could instantly find to put up. Um, so if you're currently in the middle of an afternoon of doing your research, having listened to our opening kind of conversation, there should now be a, a list of things. Obviously, those are all for you to independently look at. And it's it's just it's not rather than advertisement. It's just signposting points in our discussion as well. Um, what I wanted to 
open up to now, and I can see we've had a couple of questions come in. We'll move on to those shortly. But what I wanted to move on to now is just about what applicants should expect when they've gone through that process and they've organized their audition or their interview. Um, what should they expect of the audition process? Is there a typical audition or anything that we might be able to suggest to think about or prepare for? Are there any do's or don'ts feels very kind of prescriptive, very restricting. So I'm more thinking, are there things that maybe it's useful for people to know if it's their first time or if it's their fifth time, however they're engaging with it. And also in particular, maybe what are drama schools and the auditioners looking for? That kind of question. I know it might vary from one school to another, but how can applicants anticipate that and how can they process that experience perhaps? Ali, I've just seen you, yeah. I honestly think that when you come to, and this is the hardest thing to do, is come to an audition, just be yourself. It, it's impossible to say what a drama school is looking for because it, it, it's just impossible. We're looking, you know, the people that we feel will be right in our space are people that are themselves, are not scared of being themselves, are not thinking, I've got to be this, I've got to be that. No, it's just you. Offer yourself. And when you come to an audition day, don't be scared. There is no right or wrong. You know, I'm very clear when I say to people, people worry so much about their pieces and everybody's doing a, you know, a couple of pieces for all drama schools. I can absolutely guarantee you that nobody did not get into drama school because they forgot their lines. It, it so doesn't matter. Just come with your joyous self. You're all unique human beings. And that's what drama schools are looking for. Great. Thank you, Ellie. Sam. Yeah, so for a few years now, I've written a feature for the stage and it's always along the lines of, you know, what are drama schools looking for? And I go and I interview all the drama schools and I talk to them all and they all come down to saying the same thing. <laughs> and they're just looking for you to be yourself. They're looking for truth. They're looking for authenticity. They're looking for you to think. They want you to think deeply about the character that you've chosen to play, about the play, about the meaning of that play, why it matters. Um, they do not want you in a mask. And I think a lot of people just turn up trying to be this, that or the other and just stop trying to be something, just, just be you. And they want to see your interpretation of the character, not someone else's. Unfortunately, um, there are very, very many well-meaning parents and drama teachers who get a bit over-controlling and uh, they direct the student. And you see a lot of people who are being over-directed by a well-meaning English teacher or a well-meaning drama teacher at school, and it ruins your chances. So just try and let it come from you, not from someone else. Lovely. I think that's a again, and that feels really in keeping with some of the advice we gave earlier. And I think it, it's important to note that, isn't it, that it's not to, to necessarily criticise other people's vision of what drama school might be, but actually the reality is what you make of it and how you engage in that room a little bit. Justin. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of students do hear just be yourself, but some struggle with kind of what does that mean? And, and I think, yeah, it, it does just mean just approach this process as truthfully and authentically as you can. Um, but two things I think sometimes students don't always think about what, what drama schools are also looking for. We're gonna take it that you have that talent and skill to be able to act, okay? And that's what you're auditioning for. But to be able to work with other people is key. You need to be able to show that you, you've got an openness and a responsiveness to be able to work with other people, okay? And you're also opened to kind of constructive criticism as well. Some people take it harshly. And when you see that in an audition, it can be off-putting. You need to just be open and responsive to learning and think the person who is speaking to you or directing you has your best interests at heart. And when you're open and responsive like that, that's where the majority of the learning will take place. Great, thank you for that. Yeah, I think yeah, that feels like very in keeping. There's a, a bit of a theme emerging about the sense of connection and collaboration is such a critical word to, to bring into this conversation as well for anybody approaching drama school. Thank you very much. Stuart. Well, all, all that really, and more, but um, uh, as Sam said, I mean, you're, you're more likely not to get in if you've been overcoached. If, if on the panel we can't see 
you know, see you for the work that's been put into you and, and the piece. And also with, with that, that there are no prizes for difficulty. I know lots of um, uh, lots of auditionees you know, will come to me and say, oh, I want to I do this piece because it's really difficult and it's going to really impress them. And you don't get any prizes for that because, again, you're, you, you're, um, you're, you're trying to um, give off some sort of a uh, presenter mask, really, with that difficulty. The idea is to choose something that you can really identify with. Uh, and that's truthful and real for you. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to have been through the experience, but you have to be able to relate to the experience. And I think Justin's right, you know, sometimes, you know, people auditioning for schools don't know what quite themselves is yet. <laughs> that's still an emerging process. So it's about, it's about just feeling comfortable uh, and not trying to impress, but actually trying to find the truth in a, in a given piece. But what Justin says is absolutely right about, you know, openness and responsiveness, because that's absolutely key when often you will get redirected uh, or, or given some comments in a piece. And how you respond to that is, is a key part of whether you go forward to the next stage, whether you can take on that criticism and in a very open way and be an imaginative way. Thank you. Um, I think that's a, it's a really useful thing just to maybe slightly progress a little bit. So we've talked a little bit about what might be expected, about things that can happen in the room. And, and what's really great is you've also been able to offer some very clear and specific advice to prospective students about how they might approach that. Um, is there, are there other sources or other locations that maybe might be useful to access to get more of an idea of what's expected from you? Um, Sam, I know you mentioned YouTube. Um, but I'm also aware that sometimes there are online videos from specific drama schools talking through their process. So that's maybe quite important to mention. But is there anywhere else where you, do, you maybe direct somebody to find out this information just if, if they want a little bit more or they, they want something, a, a different piece of advice or they need to develop their understanding of it? Um, and also added to that, are there places where young people can go to get direct support? I know we've mentioned Open Door as an opportunity that, that acts to kind of open the doors to drama school but are there ways in which a student who may be facing some form of barrier to feeling that they can participate in the audition process or in drama school can actually access support or a bursary fund to move through that and have you got any advice on addressing that yeah. Stuart yeah I think it's I think it's so different in different places in the country isn't it uh, um, you know and it, it, it does come down to who your teacher is, whether it's on your A level or your diploma course or, or, or whatever. Or, um, but I think I, I think ultimately you've either got to contact your teacher to try and you know sort of navigate that process a little bit, or to contact the school and say, "I'm really interested in auditioning for you. Um, these are the situations I'm facing. You know, help." <laughs> uh, and hopefully, a school worth its salt will try and do help that person. Great. Um, yeah, Justin. Well, yeah, I also think it's it's a good idea for prospective students to contact the institution's outreach department. I think when when you contact the outreach, which is is basically a, a department within the institution, which literally goes out and does workshops within the community, educational workshops and developmental workshops. So I think contacting the outreach department of drama schools is a really key way because then you can talk to them potentially about possible barriers um, and, and access points. Great, thank you. Um, Sam? Yeah, just a really quick one to say that um, on most of the drama school websites, you will find an application form for a fee waiver for the audition fee. Um, so you can just go onto the website and fill out the fee waiver form and you should be able to get a free audition and possibly be reimbursed for your travel expenses. Brilliant, thank you. Ali? Yeah, I think that's really important. I mean, actually at Fourth Monkey, we don't charge audition fees. It's free for everybody. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I think it's something really good to think about when you're looking at drama schools is what can I afford to do? Can I afford to go? You know, some schools you'll get full student finance. Some schools you'll get partial student finance. Some schools you'll be able to get a dance drama award. Um, some schools 
I think um, Bristol, like Fourth Monkey, are accelerated BA courses, which means you just have two years of training. So, and so you can get full uh, student finance for that. Um, and you leave with less debt. So it's really important to be realistic about it, I think, um, because actually while you're at drama school, what you don't want is to be fretting about how am I ever going to afford to get through this training? You know, I know in London, it's, it's really expensive being in London, uh, not so expensive being in Bristol, which is, you know, really fabulous. Um, but make sure that you feel comfortable going ahead and um, knowing that you can get through your course. Great, thank you very much, Ali. Stuart, you had something to add. Yeah, I, I think that's really important because often the, the, the page of the online prospectus that students don't read is, is fees. Uh, and that there's a, a huge complexity in, in, in the market, as Ali said, because some are partial and some are fully funded, some are Dada awards that are dance and drama awards that quite complicated to understand if it's your first time coming to it. Um, so really trying to understand whether you can actually afford to go to the school that you're auditioning for is, is really crucial. It's often the bit that's overlooked. And, and I think it's, it's really important as well. I think just to just relate, and, and we've sort of talked this through, but um, Justin and Sam, your observations of actually contacting, looking for that fee waiver point and also contacting the outreach department and having that communication, it shouldn't be a financial barrier um, and understanding how that works as well. I think Stuart, it's really, that's a really lovely way of doing it, but actually think of that maybe not to say the business aspect, but maybe some of the practical and logistical aspects so that you can be ahead of it again. So you make it about you. Um, and you're, you're driving that forward. I think it's really important that we, we dissolve any kind of stigma around those things because it's important that everybody can be represented in our acting Hello. institutions. Um, what I'd like to do now is, first of all, thank you very much for what I, uh, what's been a fascinating discussion for me just to kind of move through. It's been really brilliant to hear so much from, from you. I'd like now, just before we wrap up with maybe some final points of conclusion, um, final piece of the device, I'd like just to, to address, there's been three questions that have been answered, uh, that have been asked in the Q&A section. So we're gonna start by ask, answering those briefly. Um, and also, if you've got any other questions, please do feel free to post them either in the chat to us or in the Q&A. We'll try and answer them as go, they go through. Um, I'm going to begin just going through them in, in the sequence in which they appeared. And the first question um, is, uh, is it more difficult for international students to get into a UK drama school? Um, Justin, I think you'd started to type an answer to that. So can I come to you first on that? Yeah. Potentially? <laughs> um, it can be challenging. It's not always necessarily more difficult. OK, but it can be challenging. Um, but but for us here at Arts, anyway, it's it's about really looking at the person who is applying and you have to take each candidate and each perspective student at their own merit. So the answer for me is, is yes, it can be challenging, but not necessarily more difficult um, because it's about language skill and development and ability to um, depending on the drama school you're you're applying to. But, but I, would, I would not let that put you off from applying. I would still say absolutely categorically apply if that's what you want to do and deal with that when you, when you, when you kind of come into contact with that as opposed to thinking, okay, I'm not going to get in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody else have anything to add about, about potential challenges? And I think it's really important we're honest about that. And, and thank you very much, Justin, for your answer there. Is there anything anybody, Ali, I can see you on mute. I, I absolutely agree with what Justin says. It, and um, <clears throat> it, it's, slightly, it's slightly trickier since Brexit happened. Um, it's made it a little bit harder. Um, and just be aware that um, for some schools, international students have a higher fee than um, students from this country. Just be aware of that. Um, I think I think it's great. You should definitely apply. I agree, um, but there might be just a few bits of admin that are slightly more tricky. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I hope that's I hope that that's answered your question a little. It's it's obviously without specific moments. It's we we're sometimes talking generalizations, but I really appreciate both of you taking the time to to answer that as clearly as we did. Um, the next question um, comes from Maeve, 
Um, could you recommend any drama schools in Ireland? So slightly more specific question. Um, does anybody have any specific recommendations um, from, from your own knowledge, your own experience or people you've in, encountered maybe within the profession? Sam. I know there's a there's a really good one and I can't remember its name. <laughs> I really sorry. I know there's an extremely good one um, and I can't remember what it's called. Sorry. Justin, um, some students here have, have discussed Trinity uh, in Ireland, um, and that's one I would say to explore. But, but the, again, there are a lot of Irish actors who exist, a small community of actors there as well who come to the UK to train um, and go through their actor training. But I would, I would investigate Trinity as one. Yeah, I think it's, it's also important. Was that, the, was that the one that was you were trying to remember, Sam? You, you, you think it's, it's also really important that there's drama school can be so specific that sometimes, and it's also fair to say we, we're so focused in this particular discussion looking at that, but certainly to have a look at Trinity and also to maybe um, to look around and the various different options that are available there for you. Um, I'll also keep on having a little bit of a, a look as we go on to our next question. And if I can find any, any others, and Sam, if you do the same, we can maybe also post a link to, uh, to that one if it comes up. Thank you very much. Um, next question, um, and I think this is probably something that everybody will have something to say, and Justin, I can see you've already started to type an answer to this again, um, but does it matter if you use an audition piece that has been overused? I'm going to, I mean, leave that open and you can unmute and, and chip in on that. I'm on, Ali, I'll, I'll let you uh, take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first question is, what's overused? How do you know what's been used? How do you know what somebody else has done? It's impossible to know. Uh, what it what it is good to do is don't just I would say don't go to an audition book and just pull out a piece, read plays, see what's on. You know I always feel if somebody's coming to do an audition piece with a play that was on at the bush last year, it shows me oh you're good you're going to the theatre that's great you're interested in new plays that are being written, so look for those pieces. Um, overused Shakespeare, there's only a certain amount of pieces that one can do. You run out of plays at some point. So um, as long as you bring your own lovely, unique talent to a piece, make it interesting, make it new, make it different. Do Romeo standing on his head, I don't know, whatever you wanna do, whatever other skills you've got to offer. But I would look for a contemporary piece, look for plays that have been done recently in the last five, 10 years, um, but really recently is even better. Thank you very much. Uh, Justin, did you want to add to that? Yeah, no, that's it. And that was going to be my answer. So you don't really know what's overused, but I get, I get the question fully, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, it's not about being overused because you are going to be a completely different or have a different interpretation. You have your Romeos or Juliets or Iagos. Your Iago is going to be completely different. Your Juliet is going to be different. So it's about your interpretation, not whether it's used a lot. It's what you bring to the character that matters. Great. Yeah. Thank you for that. Stuart. Yeah, actually, it, it, one of the uh, uh, benefits, if you like, of, of the last couple of years is there have been some absolutely fantastic one person shows written that have rich and for, because that's been the only thing that's been able to be produced in COVID. Uh, and there's some really rich um, seems to be mined of uh, pieces from those plays, and they're very recent. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm just gonna can't thank you very much. I'm gonna we've answered that one. Yes. Um, so next question, and we're coming now to a point. We're going to take these next. Um, we've got oh, we've got four questions. We'll try and do these a little bit slightly more rapid fire. And um, this, I think, is maybe one I'd like to maybe come back to this to close. So the question, so thank you very much for your question about how do you know if you're talented enough to go to drama school? I've got a feeling I might know some of the answers that will, will come from that, but also I, I want to maybe return to that as our final question, because I think that's a very important, uh, important thing to come back to. And um, the next question comes from uh, somebody saying, how vital is it to have training for screen acting? The majority of courses I've seen have prioritized acting for stage with only one or two modules for screen. Would anybody like to take that one quickly? Yeah, you know, that's why we've set up a, a an acting for screen course, which um, uh, we really sort of did a lot of research over the past couple of years before launching it. But it's 
it's not just about the, it, it's really important because the vast majority of a young actor's work is going to be in film and television if they're a working actor, that, that is the reality. And, um, and in the past, schools haven't really done so much of that. And so they get used to the technical process of finding marks and camera angles and things like that. But actually the entire process is completely different. It's not a communal rehearsal process. It's not an organic development with a team. It's, it's you as the actor sort of learning, finding your own way through that. And it's a very different process, a very different way of working. And so we've created a course that you know, we think can adapt to that. But yeah, it's really important. Great, thank you. Sam, did you have something on that? Yeah, so the drama schools are really different um, with their theatre and um, screen acting uh, split. Um, I don't know if I should be name dropping, but RADA are just excellent <laughs> when it comes to film and TV. Um, their department that they have, the facilities they have, they have a partnership with Warner Brothers, um, like the amount they do in that department is incredible. Um, you know, Central have a very good film and TV thing and Oxford School of Drama. And there, you know, there are other ones as schools as well with very good um, film and TV departments. And yeah, they vary wildly, um, the drama schools. And it's not always clear on their website what the split is and how it is and the links. So if you are offered a place at the drama school and that's important to you, just ask questions and find out and speak to past students. A good place to find past students, by the way, or current students is Twitter. Um, and you can find them on there and you can give them a little private DM and say, oh, I've been offered this place and what's it? And they're probably gonna be very happy to talk to you. Thank you. Just, I know that Ali and Justin, I know you may have to add this. I just want to add in a secondary question that's, that's just coming right at the end here um, um, and asking if doing a screen or a stage course stops you from working the other. Um, so just to add that into as we're thinking about how screen acting maybe fits in. Ali, do you want to? Yeah, I, um, I think we should be doing both on, on a course. I think, you know, ultimately it's, it's learning to act. It's connecting to truth and you connect to truth in a different way in the theatre than you do on, in, on camera. So I think courses should be offering um, both um, on, on, a, on a BA course. Um, I think, it, it, you know, if you've just done a, a, a screen course, you're not not going to ever work in theatre and vice versa. But I think when you leave drama school, presumably you want to get an agent an agent will want to know that they can put you up for all sorts of work, you know, and so you need to have a training in all work, including radio and um, all the things that are now going to start to become even more important, motion capture, all these things that are, people are going to earn a living doing lots of different things, making your own work, devising all the sorts of things that people can, we want, we want students that come out of drama school now to be able to earn a living. Right. Well, that's what Thank I you. Thank you, Ali. I'm just aware of time, so I'm going to try and sort of speak through. Justin, I know you had something to, to add to that or contribute to that. I was just going to quickly say it doesn't really matter if you haven't done any screen training at all, because as you heard, many drama schools um, implement that in their curriculum anyway. So and it is a different acting technique. There is a different technique and it's just about learning it and developing. And that's the whole point of what I said previously, contemporary actor training. Thank you. Um, I'm just now going to come, there's two, there's two more questions before we get to that very final one. So we'll try and be slightly brief, although they are quite big questions. Um, first of all, would you say it would be better to go to a bigger or more well-known drama school as those are the ones people will come to for the end of your show, course showcase? And do you, would you say if it makes any difference when trying to get into the industry, whether you've done a three-year or a two-year course? Um, so let's take those as two. So first of all, the, the, the bigger, better, role of the showcase and um, Justin and Sam I'm going to come to you to answer that one if that's okay Justin the, the, the quick answer is no no both of them I mean you know showcases are showcases and agents cast and directors producers they, they they go far and wide to many many showcases so that that is not an issue at all and in terms of industry training to one year two year or three years it's all relative. It's about your skill and what an agent is looking for. 
So that doesn't matter either. Brilliant. That's the really quick answer. Thanks very much, Justin. I appreciate it. And also, I'd just like to acknowledge Ali, your nod there. It was um, saying that you were in agreement with that. Sam, Thank would you, you like to add anything? I'm going to have a really unpopular answer. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I, I've been recently doing some research about agents and showcases. And I hate to say it, but the agents, you will fill a theatre with agents at the big drama schools and you may not at the smaller ones. And it's the truth. And But the most important thing is, is that the student connects with the drama school. So I would say that the student's learning is actually more important than the showcase. So if a student connects with a smaller drama school over a bigger drama school, mm -hmm. go to the smaller one. But the agent take up rate is higher at the bigger drama schools. I'm afraid. And I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. I think there's, there's something, sorry to, 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 I think there's also that moment of, so I see a lot of former students of mine, two or three years out of different education centres. That's when they get the big move in age. And I also see a lot of recent graduates from larger schools, maybe change agents. So they, that's a, that becomes another thing. The other part of this, the way in which we move through this course is, is we're focusing very much on choosing the, the, the drama school. So there are things to consider in that and the realities. But I think our focus, it's fair to say, has been on what the training is and how that works for you. Um, the other what the other side of the industry starts to emerge as we come through but it's, it is important to be clear on that so Sam thank you for, for sharing the findings of your research um, I, I just want to very quickly so in a moment I'm going to ask how do you know if you're talented enough to go to drama school but before that um, Florence has, has asked a question about how students assimilate who 25 years plus um, they're 28 applying this year what's the percentage of mature students in an undergraduate course and I just want to uh, I mean, I'm fairly confident that this will be maybe a reassurance from us, but I just wanted to open up that. Stuart, I don't know, speaking in terms of, of Bristol, what would you say? Um, yeah, there's well, probably about 20% of our, of our intake is over 25. Um, and um, yeah, we would encourage that. Some, you, you know, if you want that kind of diversity, representation, emotional maturity, all those things are really valuable. Brilliant. I think that that also feels like it's something that's maybe echoed by the rest of the panel that with this inclusivity and Ali you mentioned right at the beginning it's also about age and so I think that's important that's another myth and maybe something about it sometimes feels there's a lot of pressure to get things done right at 18 19 20 but 25 is you're still very much in the point of, of having something to bring finally I just want to come on to this question because I feel it's the key one I was going to end with another one which the panelists knew but I think this is a really useful one to kind of end how do you know if you're talented enough to go to drama school? And also, panelists, is there a particular piece of advice that you'd give or you've received that you think maybe might speak to this or maybe might add something else? But I just want to open that up to you, first and foremost. Sam. Um, I think treat the audition as a learning experience. That's like the main piece of advice I would give to anyone auditioning. Uh, treat it as a learning experience. And what can you learn from that? And how do you know if you're talented enough? Uh, you do not. And just don't judge yourself. Just, just be you, be interested in the characters, be interested in the text and uh, love the art in yourself, not yourself in the art. And that's that. Stanis Velasco, I stole that, but. Um. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, and also the learning experience, it's kind of, nobody's looking for a finished product, right? Mm -mm. They're looking for someone they can train. Yeah, that's important. Thank you very much, Sam. Justin. Yeah, I don't think you can really say whether you're talented enough to that degree, because there's many actors out there who are working all the time and that the opinions on their talent are going to differ. OK, many people are going to say they are talented and there's others who are going to say they're not. Just like when critics will write a review for a show, one says fantastic, one says terrible. So it's just about bringing yourself and, and, and assessing your skill as you go through the process. Thank you very much, Justin. Stuart. Yeah, I think to, to, it is a really difficult one to, to, to answer that, isn't it? Do you know if you're good enough? And, and, and you don't know. But one of the things is, it, 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 you know, it's still, it's a really difficult industry to succeed in. And therefore, I suppose that kind of single-mindedness is really important. So if you can't see yourself doing anything else, then that's, that's probably you, you have that single-mindedness that will probably make you talented enough with the right training, perhaps. Uh, and the, for, for the audition process, uh, 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 absolutely, you, you have to um, you have to be real and remember that you're a human being who doesn't have to be validated by the success of getting into drama school. Um, that's um, 
you not you shouldn't be so feel decimated. Yeah. Thank you, you very much for that. that. Thank you, Stuart. Ali. Yeah, yeah. So I would just say um, I think uh, I don't. You can't judge if your talent's enough. I think talent is bravery. If you're brave enough to even go and do an audition, then you're talented enough. If those schools don't pick to have you in their cohort, that's cool. Go somewhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I think for those of you watching, um, we're a couple of minutes over maybe the hour long slot we had. I do apologise for that. But as you can see, it's a conversation we could continue to have. Um, I'd just like to really recommend as well that if you are still interested in these things, this video will be available, but also there'll be resources and articles on the stage, which you can access via online, but also via the resources, places like Get Into Theatre that we've mentioned before. And I would really encourage you to look through those links in the chat, or if you're watching it back again, just to do a quick Google as we highlight that. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic to talk to uh, our four panellists today. Thank you very much for your time, Sam, Ali, Justin and Stuart. Um, and that's everything now. I'm, I'm presuming thank you so nice much. Hand, but thank you, Ali. Thank oh, you, Stuart. I've got to go to a tutorial. I can hear somebody calling me. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, excellent. That's everything. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.